Welcome to the Rancho Mirage Public Library. My name is Susan Cook, and I am the principal librarian here at the library. Um, the Rancho Mirage Library Foundation wishes to thank Lynn Walker for her gift that sponsored today's presentation by Jim Cornette. And Lynn is here. And you could see by the fact that we had to put out extra chairs that Jim Cornette is one of our most popular speakers, and we're always glad that he makes room for us in his busy schedule. He is a writer, researcher, and ecologist, and today he takes in an in-depth look at the story of the controversial coyote. How many people think that the coyote is controversial? <laughs> okay. <laughs> With 28 books on desert plants, birds, and other wildlife, and more than 30 years of studying desert ecological systems, Jim Cornette's presentations blend scientific information with fascinating stories and his personal observations and research. Um, I also wanted to mention that we, Jim did bring some of his books from Na Nature Trails Press, and that they're in the back of the room, and that we'll be happy to, he'll be happy to sign those afterwards for you. So with that, Please give Jorm Cornette a nice, warm Rancho Mirage Public Library welcome. <laughs> Getting a little rowdy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's not a very good imitation. I, uh... <laughs> well, it's always nice to be here in front of a nice, uh, friendly crowd, I hope, but maybe not after I talk today. Uh, my wife wanted me to ask you, don't you have anything else to do today? Uh, <laughs> um, as she said, my name is Jim Cornette. I'm a desert ecologist, and uh, over the years, I've noticed I get more and more questions about coyotes. Um, such, so many questions, in fact, that I thought I would answer some of those for you today. And so I'm going to turn on my device here, and it's th I think it's working. And we're going to talk about the controversial coyote. There we go. Um, I'll ho I hope I'll answer most of your questions about coyotes, but if I forget any, we'll have an opportunity after I'm done talking, and you can ask additional questions at that time. Um, <laughs> I get a lot of people who want to know what can they do about the coyote problem. And we'll definitely hit on that uh, today without any question whatsoever. Now, what we're going to do is I formatted this whole program in terms of a quiz. And I'm going to ask some of you to participate with me. If you know the answer, uh, shout it out on the first couple of questions anyway. And the first one I have to talk about, and this we're going to use this uh, fellow here to help me explain everything today, America's best known coyote. Uh, the first question we have to deal with is, is it coyote or coyote? Uh, coyote is on the left there of the, on the screen, and coyote is on the right. And according to Webster's Dictionary, the proper pronunciation is either one. <laughs> you can say coyote if you like, or coyote. Now, in science, uh, scientists do not like to end words with a long vowel sound. So we usually say coyote. <laughs> Okay. Uh, coyote sounds a little bit more familiar, a little bit friendly, and less formal, and it's the, one of the goals of science is to try to sound as sophisticated as possible, so I will be saying coyote most of the time. Um, its scientific name is Canis latrans, which in Latin means barking dog. Coyotes do bark. We'll talk more about that in just a little bit. Now, uh, true or false? A coyote is about the size of a German shepherd. If you think that's true, raise your hand. About the size of a German shepherd. Okay, how many people think it's bigger than a German shepherd? Nobody. How many people think it's smaller than a German shepherd? Oh, most of you. Interesting. This is a very knowledgeable uh, crowd. The reality is that coyotes are, in fact, smaller than a German shepherd. Typical German shepherd weighs about 75 pounds. The largest coyote 
ever recorded anywhere on planet Earth, of course, they only live in North America, so uh, anywhere in North America was 45 pounds. That was a real big chubby coyote from Maine uh, that was hit by a car and they weighed it. And it was probably a little bit heavier than that, maybe a couple of pounds before it got hit by the car. But in any event, uh, coyotes are definitely smaller than a German Shepherd. Uh, here's another true or false question. A wolf can be four times the weight of a coyote. How many people think that's true? Raise your hand. How many th people think that's false? Well, it's actually true. In fact, uh, wolves usually do very much outweigh coyotes, and they can be um, up to four times larger than a coyote. Uh, here's a silhouette of the two animals. You can see that the wolf is much, much larger. Now, this is an interesting one. So when we talk about coyote and we talk about its size, a coyote is about the size of your pet cocker spaniel. They weigh about 25 pounds. Both of them weigh about 25 pounds. And the biggest coyote ever recorded would be about the size of the Springer spaniel that you see on the screen there, uh, about 45 pounds. So most of you probably, or many of you may be surprised that coyotes aren't nearly as big as we think they are in terms of weight. So we need to talk briefly about why do people believe coyotes are larger than they really are? And there's several reasons for that. Uh, one thing is that uh, coyotes have uh, a winter coat. And this time of year, in February, early February, they will look about as heavy as they ever can be. They're still about 25 to 30 pounds in our area, maximum weight. But they look heavier because they have this very dense, thick winter coat that keeps them warm during the colder months. And that's one of the reasons they look big, bigger. Uh, here's a photograph of a coyote with its summer coat. Look, looks a lot smaller. Uh, but the weight is roughly about the same. Uh, the other reason that people think coyotes are bigger is that they have long legs. Uh, compared with the gray fox, for example, their legs are much, much longer. So they stand taller. And it, may again, makes them look a little bit bigger, a little bit heavier than they actually are. Um, uh, finally, uh, bigger coyotes make for better stories. <laughs> uh, uh, I can't tell you how many people who have contacted me, sometimes by telephone, sometimes by email, occasionally I even get an actual letter, and they say, I saw a coyote, I, it was the size of a wolf. It was definitely over 100 pounds. That's twice as big as the biggest coyote ever recorded. So larger coyotes make for better stories, as you can see in this picture. <laughs> <clears throat> Boy, it was the biggest canine I've ever seen in my life. Uh, <laughs> now, before we go on, I have to talk a little bit about the intelligence of coyotes. And um, I want to talk about a coyote that was locally known as Willie. This is a coyote, uh, probably the smartest coyote I ever met in my entire life. And it was a coyote that lived in Death Valley National Park. I, I was doing research, in fact, still am doing some research in Death Valley National Park. So each year I, I go to the park. And uh, in this particular year, we were studying palm oases. And let's see, there we are. And we were studying the palm oasis in Grapevine Canyon near Scotty's Castle. How many of you have been to Scotty's Castle? If you haven't been there, you have to go. It's even for people who don't like the desert and don't like barren, brown terrain, you'll love Death Valley. So it's a great uh, four or five day trip to take sometimes if you want to go to Las Vegas on the way. You can have a little bit of fun over there as well. But in any event, this pl took place in Scotty's castle. Here's the castle. Actually, it's a castle, very impressive. And this gives you a little idea of uh, the lay of the land, and this is important. Here's Scotty's castle right here. That's the main building. This is Grapevine Canyon. And this event happened, uh, there's the castle, and there's the bend in the road right here. Whoop, I want to go back here for just a second. <laughs> okay. Uh, this bend in the road near Scotty's castle was uh, Willie's work area. This is his work area. Now, coyotes are frequently seen along roadsides, and they come there hoping to find some scraps of food that people threw out of their car. Maybe they were feeding the coyotes, which I don't recommend. And um, this is Willie. I was coming down the road, and I wanted to get some pictures of coyotes, and so I saw Willie in the road, and I parked my car alongside the road, and I started to get my camera equipment out while I was in my car. Another car passed me going fairly slowly. It's, there's some curves, and it's not a very wide road. 
And when the tourists, I'm not a tourist, I'm always, you know, I'm much more formal than that. Um, tourists passed me, they saw the kite in the road and they stopped right in the middle of the road. And Willie, walked, Willie had a limp and he limped slowly up to the car and I thought, oh gosh, there's something wrong with him. He's not in good shape. This is an injured coyote. I couldn't see the injury, but I assumed that there was something wrong. And I could hear the uh, lady who was on the passenger side. She said, look, honey, that poor coyote, he's limping. He can't possibly get the food. We need to feed him. They started throwing Fritos and Cheetos and sandwiches out of the car. And Willie was gobbling everything up that came out of the car. And finally, he limped back off into the desert, and the car went away. Um, as the car drove off, I noticed that Willie wasn't limping anymore. <laughs> and I, well, that's weird. So I stayed in my car, and another car passed me. As soon as the car got past me, Willie limped up to the road, and the car stopped, saying, Honey, look, this poor coyote, we need to feed it. Food starts flying out of the window. You're not supposed to do this in national parks, and I'm not suggesting you do this. And Willie gobbles up the food, the car drives off. He doesn't limp away. I couldn't believe his third car comes by, same thing again. He limps onto the roads, right in the middle of the road, so you, you have to stop. And again, same thing, this, these people didn't feed Willie, uh, so he slowly wandered back into the desert. And I said, this is really bizarre because it seems like he's limping when he goes up to the cars, but he's not limping when he leaves the roadway. So I stopped my car, I got out. Uh, this is with a regular lens, there's no telephoto or anything here. Uh, Willie was hanging around the road, and I watched him for over an hour. He never limped, but a car came by, and Willie limps back up to the roadway again. This coyote somehow figured out how to take advantage of our social nature, the social nature of humans. And here he is looking at me thinking, I'm going to feed him, but I, I didn't feed him. And he had somehow learned that when he acted hurt, in this case, limping, he was more likely to get food if he did that. And so he has learned over God knows how long, a few months, maybe a couple of years, that he was more likely to get food if he acted as though he was in pain and he was not well. And it worked because in every instance, people uh, pulled up and talked to him and said nice things to him, and at least two of the people fed him a lot of food. Uh, it doesn't appear that the junk food he was getting uh, hurt him in any way. You can see that he has a, a very nice, wonderful uh, coat of fur. <laughs> He's a very healthy coyote. And I don't know whatever happened to Willie, but um, my guess is he's probably the largest coyote in Death Valley National Park, and he probably weighs close to 45 pounds. <laughs> okay. Um, now, true or false? All right. The coyote is an extremely successful species with no threats to its survival. That's true. That's true. This is good news. Not every species is endangered, and coyotes are doing really, really well in spite of being persecuted in a myriad number of ways. Uh, wherever they range, they're doing very well because they're so smart. Uh, they're one of the smartest animals that we have in the desert by far, and some of you may have already discovered that around your homes, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, just to show you how well they're doing, uh, when Europeans first came to the North American continent, uh, they found that, uh, before, this is before 1700, that the coyotes were pretty much found in the Midwest and some areas of the Southwest, in the Sonoran Desert, into California, Arizona and up into southern Canada. But by, 18, uh, by, by the early 1900s, they had spread into the light tan areas that you see here. Uh, let's see if I can point that out. These areas. And then by, whoop, didn't want to do that. <laughs> and then by uh, today, they now have, are from coast. Can't really see the colors here, but they are from the California all the way to New York, Maine, throughout much of uh, Canada and Alaska. Uh, one of the most remarkable redistributions of any animal on, pl on planet Earth, particularly for a carnivore. Uh, generally, there aren't a lot of carnivores in comparison with the prey animals that they eat. But in the case of the coyote, they have really spread everywhere now. And we're also noticing, I'll talk more about this in a second, that where they have displaced wolves, as in the uh, northeastern United States, 
Uh, coyotes, the largest coyote you'll find are in this area right here. The, these are the ones that get well over 30 pounds on a pretty, pretty regular uh, basis. I press that button again. There we go. All right, true or false? Coyotes have been known to breed with wolves. The offspring are called koi wolves. How many people think that's true? Do they breed with wolves? Raise your hand if you think that's true. How many people think they don't breed with wolves? Well, most of you are wrong. <laughs> Sorry about that. They do breed with wolves. They're very closely related. Uh, most of the breeding, in fact, all of the breeding, uh, the hybrid animals that we're finding now are in the extreme northeastern United States and extreme eastern, southeastern Canada, uh, where wolves no longer exist. Uh, the few wolves that have moved into the area, they're usually individual males or females, and the only breeding partner they can find are coyotes, and they have been known to breed with them, and they're called koi wolves. Uh, they're half the size of a, of a wolf and, and a little bit bigger than a coyote. This is a picture of some right here. Um, there's some very important differences between the two uh, in terms of their behavior, and we'll talk about that in a second as well. So koi wolves. Now here's one. How about this one? Coyotes have been known to breed with domestic dogs. What do you think? Well, if you said yes, you're right. You're right. Uh, there have been instances, all the instances thus far, uh, in the west have been with captive coyotes, but in the eastern half of the United States, east of the Mississippi River, there have been some instances of uh, coyotes breeding with domestic dogs. However, uh, the pups from such a pairing uh, does, do not do very well. Uh, and the primary reason for that is that domestic dogs abandon the female coyote after she gives birth, and by herself she can't raise the pups successfully most of the time. Uh, I have a photograph of a hybrid domestic dog and coyote that I want to show you right now. There it is, called a koi poodle. <laughs> they don't actually look like that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we need to move on to more serious things. Here we go. Okay. Whoop. Went too far. Went too far. Oh, now I've given it away. Uh, let's see if I can. There we go. All right. Coyotes are wilderness animals that avoid towns and cities, and you already saw that that was false. Uh, coyotes are just as at home outside the doors of the Rancho Mirage Library as they are in the middle of Joshua Tree National Park. Okay, and that's one of the reasons they're so successful is they're smart and very adaptable. They can survive by feeding on garbage if they have to in downtown Los Angeles where they have been found breeding, or they can survive on cottontails and roadkills in the middle of Joshua Tree National Park. Uh, it makes no difference to the coyotes. Coyotes reach their greatest densities where urban areas interface with wilderness areas, which would be most of the Coachella Valley. Uh, so coyotes are extremely abundant here because they have the best of both worlds. They have the wilderness environment, which they can find shelter and breed and raise their pups, and then at night come down into the residential areas and feed on all the garbage, things that we don't eat. Um, so they really do well in those kinds of environments. Here's a group of photographs just showing coyotes uh, living with people <laughs> uh, on city streets. I bet all of you have seen a coyote somewhere on city streets, P girl jogging, a golf course. <laughs> uh, they really get around, and they don't seem to mind people most of the time. Uh, this is my favorite photograph. I did not take this photograph. This is a, uh, a commuter train. The coyote got on the train because it wasn't moving, and it was much warmer in there than outside. <laughs> okay. <laughs> kind of cute, I guess. All right. Here's another one. True or false? Coyotes howl like wolves. Well, if you're ambivalent, not sure, it's because it's difficult to say. They can howl. They don't howl anywhere near as good as wolves do. And uh, wolves regularly howl, as you might expect. Uh, but coyotes do, too. It's more likely, however, that you'll find them barking and yipping and yapping, making all kinds of uh, noises. A lot of times, the typical sounds you hear from coyotes, the short barks, staccato barks, and yipping and whatnot, uh, I get a lot of people who say, oh, 
my neighbor says this, in fact. He comes up to me and he says, can you hear the coyotes, Jim? They made a kill. They made a kill and they're really excited and they're yipping and yapping. And the question is, is that true or false? Is that when they make all those sounds that we hear? And the answer would be false, okay? Coyotes yip and howl to communicate the location of their territory to other coyotes, and it also is used to attract family members, all right? So it's, <laughs> if you're a predator, the last thing you want to do is make a lot of noise before you capture the animal. And God forbid, if you capture it, you're not going to make a lot of noise and then have to share the food with everybody. Uh, so you're very quiet when a kill is made. Uh, that's the normal uh, behavior of a coyote. So those sounds you hear almost everywhere in the Coachella Valley sooner or later, um, those are not coyotes that have made a kill. Okay, I want to make sure we all know that. Now, um, I get a lot of people that come up to me and say, well, I heard a lot of coyotes. They were all around us. They were to the north of us and to the south of us, and I heard a group to the east and maybe the west. Uh, those are not big groups of coyotes. Those are individual coyotes, and they're announcing their territorial location to the other coyotes in the area. So when they yell and yip and, and make a lot of staccato barking sounds, what they're doing is they're trying to let all the other coyotes know that they're saying, this is my territory. You stay out. I have all the food I need in the territory, and I, can't, I don't want to share with anybody else. Uh, I'm making these sounds to let all the other coyotes in the area know that this is not some place they want to visit or a territorial battle will ensue. And it's fairly effective. So that's why you hear, maybe in my backyard, I hear coyotes making a lot of noise on the back lawn. Oh, I shouldn't mention lawn. Uh, in the desert landscaping that I have behind my house, uh, nobody knows about it except me. Um, and uh, they're making sounds, and then I hear other coyotes down in the wash, maybe a mile away, uh, responding, saying, okay, you're up there, but we're down here. Don't you come down here. So it's a, a territorial marking device, just like they would use their urine to mark scents and, and whatnot. Same thing going on here. Um, so, uh, okay. <laughs> so they usually vocalize alone, uh, vocalize maybe with their mate, and ra rarely with their offspring. And we talked about that. Okay, true or false, coyotes are social canines that often travel in large packs representing multiple families. Coyotes travel in packs. Is that true? No. Coyotes never, ever, ever, ever travel in packs. All right? So if somebody says there was a pack of coyotes, no, 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 no. Um, let me, let me go back here. If they're talking about a pack of coyotes, what they're usually saying is that they're hearing a family group or maybe an individual coyote making a lot of different sounds, but they're not hearing a pack because coyotes don't travel in packs. This is an interesting story, uh, and we're going to go to Palm Springs because I got a call from a, a fellow that I knew a little bit, and he owns uh, two and a half acres right in the middle of uh, Palm Springs. Uh, it's where that arrow's pointing right here. There's a little patch of undeveloped land. You can see it better there. And here's a close-up. And um, this is his home right here, but then there's about two and a half acres here, and there are coyotes that live here. In fact, I have photographs of their burrows. There's one of the burrows. They dig burrows, by the way. Uh, sometimes they'll use another place for shelter, but most of the time uh, they will dig down into the ground and make a very large burrow where they will use that for shelter and where the female will give birth to her pups. Uh, they will almost always have more than one burrow in the immediate vicinity, so if danger approaches, they can leave one burrow and go into the other. Uh, so this is the first burrow on that vacant lot, and here's the second burrow that the coyote lives in. You can see the tracks all in the foreground there. Lots of coyote tracks. And this is a group that I looked at. This is the male, the father, weighed about 24, 25 pounds at the most. By the way, uh, coyotes have a lot of red fur on them. That, sometimes people th think they've seen a red fox, but it's just the, it's the normal coloration of a coyote. So there's dad, and this is the female, the mother. She's not nearly as pretty. I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> A little, I have to give you a little bit of a uh, rundown on some of the uh, life cycle stages of coyotes. Uh, they mate in winter or very, very early spring. 
Uh, season of birth is spring always. Whoop. Oh. Well, okay, we'll get back to it, don't worry. Uh, on the 10th day after they've been born, the, the pups open their eyes. At age at emergence from burrows, about four weeks. So they spent the four weeks of life in the burrow. Uh, cessation of nursing when they wean is about six weeks. After that, the parents start bringing them f f uh, solid food, not milk anymore. Age of sexual maturity, one year. So f females will breed their first year. Males will breed whenever they can. Uh, Gestation period, about two months, and age at death, and this would be in the wild, six to eight years. Uh, there was a coyote at the living desert that, uh, in captivity where he's given, handed his food every day. Uh, he lived, I think, almost 20 years. <laughs> so in captivity, they live much, much longer than they would ever live in the wild. Uh, after about eight years, they just can't run fast enough, uh, cannot defend their territory with enough frequency to do very well at all. So... Anyway, that's some of the basics. Here's an 11-day-old pup, just left the burrow. Okay, they're cute, I know. <laughs> uh, of course, the, que the real question is, why do humans think this species is cute? Uh, that's the real question. Anyway, uh, we'll talk about some at some other time. Uh, three weeks of age, about 21 days. Don't have their nice coat on yet. Uh, and here's a bunch of pups that are of various ages. Uh, all very cute little guys. I love this photograph. Uh, this guy has a, a quail. <laughs> he's, he's carrying, the parents brought it home to let him know what they're supposed to eat. Coyotes eat what their parents bring them. So as adults, they continue to search out foods that they were given to, uh, given to them when they were pups. That's typical for coyotes. Here's at five months of age. This is in that vacant lot. Uh, they had two pups was all that year. That's a small, small litter. And uh, about five months. Okay, uh, we did a study here, curious to find out what the habits are of urban coyotes, or coyotes that live in residential areas, at least in the Coachella Valley. And uh, coyotes always have some kind of distinguishing characteristic, a little notch in the ear, a funny color perhaps, um, so that you can identify them, particularly when you're only dealing with two coyotes, a male and a female. And here you can see, uh, this is, they would always leave from this exit. They could leave out here if they wanted, but we never saw them do that. They always left their uh, vacant lot. There's a fence around this too, a, a low fence. They could easily jump over. It was about five feet high. And then they would start their wanderings. And these are the places that we actually observe the coyotes. <laughs> um, there's a passageway between here and the junior high school, and they, we don't know how they got through here, but they would go into the junior high school yard every day before school started and every evening uh, after the kids left because kids leave a lot of food on the ground. <laughs> they probably got all the, their nutritional requirements just by going onto the school grounds each day, if I had to guess. Um, let me go back here. Um, and uh, the farthest we ever saw one was about, uh, oh, down this street and when we saw one in this area. But after, we don't know how far they went towards downtown Palm Springs, which is in this direction. Um, but we know that they had a much larger home range than what this map shows. These arrows only mark the points where we actually saw them. And they didn't have radio collars or anything like that. So, uh, all right. Anyway, so this is a residential uh, coyotes. What are they feeding on? They're feeding on garbage, a lot of garbage. Uh, when Palm Springs went to the large plastic trash receptacles that can't be knocked over by coyotes anymore, the coyotes <laughs> ran into big problems because now they didn't have access, to, at least red, ready access to garbage anymore. And so they had to probably resort to more normal uh, foodstuffs. Uh, there are a lot of cottontail rabbits in this area, though, and we have no doubt that they fed on cottontail rabbits. Uh, in this, let's see, where is it? On this street here, we found one feeding on a uh, dead cat. Cat had been hit by a car, and the coyote was feeding on that. So they probably feed on a lot of our pets that get hit by other people's cars. And yes, they will feed on pets as well, and I'll talk more about that in a second. Um, so they, but they, whatever it was, they were finding enough food. I do want to point out one thing, though, and that is that the one year that we watched this group, they only had two young. A normal litter is four to five. So we think that they weren't getting as much food, uh, and the female was not laying down enough fat reserves to have the maximum size litter. 
Um, so they lived here, but we don't think the food resources were particularly grand. Uh, they did produce uh, offspring the year before we started the study, the year during the study, and I talked to the owner of the house, and he said that they had uh, uh, pups the following year, but we don't know how many. So they do really well in residential areas, particularly if they have places they can put their burrows and won't be disturbed. Okay, so the answer to the question below is coyotes are social canines. The travel in large packs of multiple families is absolutely false. Um, this is, somebody says, well, I saw there were six or seven coyotes and they, uh, they were in a pack. It's not a pack, not technically a pack. A pack is when there are, are different family groups that join together to hunt together, all right? And coyotes don't do that. There's the male, the female, and then they're pups of the year. So there could be six, seven, maybe even eight coyotes in a group. They're all related. There's the mom and dad and then all of their children. Within five months, though, they're almost adult weight. And so they're going to all look like adult coyotes. And it might seem like a pack, but it's not. It's uh, The important thing to remember here, it's a family group of mom and dad and the kids. And I can't emphasize that too much. So it's false. <laughs> Okay, false, false, false. And that's important uh, because when people say coyotes travel in pack, they make the, ca the coyote look more formidable than it really is. Wolves travel in packs. There will be different family groups that are working together, hunting together, but coyotes do not. And that uh, means that uh, when you're looking at mom and dad and the kids, it's not nearly as threatening as if you were dealing with multiple family groups in one large pack. Now, this is an interesting one that humans usually uh, like to hear. Coyotes, true or false, coyotes have only one mate for their entire lives. That's true. That's true. Coyotes mate for life. Um, and uh, what's really interesting to me is that even though there will be other coyotes living in areas around where they live, other territories nearby, if a male sees another female coyote, other than his mate that is in heat, he almost never will breed with her, even if she's available. You know, maybe her mate died or he's away or whatever. No adultery ever for coyotes. You say, well, how do you know that for sure? There was a wonderful study done on, on uh, the breeding habits of coyotes. And what they did is they live captured a number of the pups and then connect, uh, uh, compared the pup's genetic markers with the parents. And they, in the entire study that lasted five years, they never could find a pup that was being raised by anything other than its biological father and its biological mother. It never, there, there was never a pup with genes of the guy next door or vice versa. There was ne never happened. And there's no, in the desert environment, uh, that study was not done in a desert environment. In a desert environment uh, where coyotes are much further apart, territories are much, much larger so that they can get enough food, uh, it means that it's even less likely that adultery would ever happen with a coyote. So you're looking at perhaps the best example of a, uh, a monogamous species, a monogamous predator. Uh, and it, you'll, I'm not sure there's another medium to large predator on planet Earth that is as monogamous, a uh, terrestrial predator, as monogamous as our coyotes. Remember that next time you see a coyote. All right. Coyotes are ravenous meat eaters that hunt large animals in packs with strangers. No, no, no. <laughs> That's definitely... Uh, False. Uh, for coyotes, nearly half their diet, let's see, okay, um, I'm in a little disjointed here. Uh, for coyotes, nearly half their diet consists of seeds, fruits, herbs, and grasses. They're vegetarians. Uh, that's why if you're feeding your dog, make sure that it has some plant material in its food. If you give it all meat, it'll die. Uh, coyotes have to eat plant material. They're omnivores, and almost half their diet is made up of uh, vegetables and things like that. 25% um, of its diet is carrion, so it's feeding on dead animals every chance it gets. And then insects, lizards, and rodents make up another 20% of the diet. That only leaves 5% of the coyote's diet, uh, which would consist of things the si uh, size of rabbits and larger. So these are not vicious predators that are you know, waiting to take down large animals. These are, uh, prim half of the time, they're vegetarians. 
the other half of the time they're eating dead animals, insects, small rodents, things like that. Uh, so they're not much when it comes to predation, compared with wolves particularly. Uh, we can tell that if we look at the skull of a coyote. Uh, this is a coyote skull that you see here. Uh, they're the canines. We have those in our mouths, but not nearly as impressive as the coyotes. Uh, they also have incisors, just like we do. And then they have um, uh, premolars that you see right there. Premolars, that's for shearing meat. Uh, all meat eaters have those. But most importantly, for our purposes, they have molars, just like you and I. And when you see a mammal with molars in its jaw, on its jaw, that tells you that it is an animal that eats a lot of plant material. And coyotes do, as I said, almost half their diet is plant material. Um, just to give you any, uh, some comparison, we'll look at the coyote. There's the molars. That, uh, bobcats have no molars. And that tells you that uh, cats and felines in general don't eat uh, plant material normally, not, not healthy ones anyway. Uh, humans, we have lots of molars because we're really good at uh, eating plant foods. We actually should eat more plants food than most of us do. That's certainly true for me. And then I also have a picture of my skull that you see right here. <laughs> Definitely a plant eater. Okay. <laughs> True or false, coyotes regularly prey on roadrunners, like the cartoon says, and the answer to that is false. Coyotes are in our area do most of their hunting at night, uh, although in the winter it's about half and half. Um, in the summer they only hunt at night. Uh, roadrunners are active in the daytime, so they never, their paths almost never cross. Uh, so if there's ever a record of a coyote eating a roadrunner, it's because they found a dead roadrunner on the ground. All right, they don't prey on them, regardless of what the cartoon might suggest. Uh, Roadrunners can't run as fast as coyotes. Coyotes can run 42 miles an hour, which is much faster than a roadrunner that can't even reach 20 miles an hour. But the roadrunner has the ability to turn on a dime, make very rapid, quick turns, and then fly if it has to to escape the coyote. Uh, so it's not an issue. <laughs> um, now, the other reason that uh, coyotes wouldn't be hunting uh, roadrunners is that they're not stealth hunters, okay? They try to chase their prey down. If they can sneak up on it, they will certainly do that. But canines in general generally hunt by seeing the prey and then chasing it down. Um, that's the normal way. Uh, felines, on the other hand, uh, with the exception of the cheetah, uh, try to sneak up on their prey, get as close as they can, make a quick rush, and a kill. Uh, that's not true for coyotes. Now we have another true-false question here, and that is, and this kind of surprises a lot of people, true, coyotes consume vast quantities of palm fruits each fall. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't show you the question. I have to show you the question. There we are. Uh, now I know, yeah. I, <clears throat> very good, very astute out there. I got the answer. Fan palm seeds are very common this time of year. You see them on the ground, and uh, the answer is true. They are the primary intermediate dispersal agent of desert fan palms. So if you hike into an oasis somewhere in the Coachella Valley, that seed got there by being carried uh, by coyotes in their intestinal tract from one spring, maybe across the valley to Thousand Palms Oasis uh, many thousands of years ago, and then they void out the seeds in their droppings. And that's what you see right here. So I have a coyote that lives, comes through my uh, yard every night and every morning I see a um, uh, coyote dropping uh, right in the middle of my driveway. I mean, it's, it's just a pile of defecatory material right there. It's loaded with palm seeds. They can digest the flesh on the palm fruits, which is fairly tasty, but it's very not much flesh there. Uh, but they cannot digest the seeds. And so the seeds are passed out in their droppings, and those seeds are ready to germinate. We did a study and found out the seeds are, uh, will germinate four times more rapidly when they've gone through a coyote than if they don't go through a coyote. So it's uh, not only are they a dispersal agent, but they facilitate the uh, germination of the seeds, as long as they're deposited where there's moist soil. A lot of times you'll be hiking up one of the canyons, and you'll see a big cluster of little tiny seedling palms, and that was a coyote dropping. And all those seeds hatch, and that's why all there's, uh, the palm seedlings are clustered, as you see right here. Uh, so started by a coyote. All right. And... Okay, 
Uh, <laughs> I went too fast again. <laughs> I'm giving away all the answers. Um, <laughs> let's see. All right, a minute now. I'll get this. Here we go. Okay. Oh, no. It's going to. Okay. Uh, true or false, malnutrition is the second leading cause of premature death of coyotes in the California deserts. And the answer, I think you already saw it, is true. A lot of the photographs I get of coyotes are of horribly emaciated animals like this little guy here. Uh, and they're actually coming up to people hoping that people will feed them because they're starving to death. Uh, this, this particular coyote uh, was wandering through the Yucca Valley area, did not survive, simply died of starvation. Starvation, that's a, uh, not an uncommon form of death in the uh, California desert region. Here we, there's another really skinny coyote came right up to the, my car uh, hoping that I would feed it and another emaciated coyote. Um, Coyotes pose a threat to humans. Now we're getting into the good stuff. <laughs> um, my wife feels uncomfortable when coyotes are around and I'm not there. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about the threat that coyotes pose to humans, if any. And I want to say that, first off, I have to say it's false. Statistical evidence indicates coyotes are... Uh, uh, not a threat to humans. There's virtually no threat. Uh, you're 100 times more likely to be struck by lightning than being threatened, not killed, threatened by a coyote, where a coyote comes up to you uh, with evil intentions. Uh, that's a very, very rare thing to have happen. It happens maybe once a year in uh, California, so far as we know, but it's a very rare uh, uh, statistic. Um, now, in terms of humans being killed by coyotes, some of you might have heard some stories. Uh, that just if you really want to worry about something, worry about getting in your car after you leave the lecture uh, this afternoon. Uh, automobile accidents. This would be in um, the entire United States. 34,000 murder, 15,000. Honeybees kill 55 people a year. Uh, lightning, 50 domestic dogs. These are pet dogs most of the time. Uh, American football, <laughs> 10. Uh, venomous snakes, 5. Barren mountain lions uh, in the entire United States, one person a year. Coyotes didn't even make the list. Have there been people killed by coyotes? The answer is yes. Um, there is only one authenticated occurrence of somebody being killed by a coyote, and that was a 3-year-old toddler in the city of Glendale. This happened about 20 years ago now. Uh, the child was allowed to go into the front yard uh, and play, unsupervised, and a coyote, uh, they, they, this home residential division was surrounded on all sides by wilderness areas. Uh, the child went outside, the coyote came up and attacked the child and uh, tried to drag it off into the brush uh, beyond the residential area, and the child died from its wounds. That's the only authenticated occurrence of a person ever being killed by a coyote. That's a three-year-old toddler, okay? Unsupervised, out in the front yard, in an area where everybody knew that their coyotes were around. They had seen them, somebody in the neighborhood sees them almost every day there, and uh, I would never allow my grandchild now to go out there and play unsupervised uh, in my backyard in Palm Springs. Uh, but that child was allowed to go outside. Um, there is one other case of a woman in uh, eastern Canada. Um, we're not sure how she died, but when she was discovered by some hikers, she was dead, and there were two coyotes feeding on the corpse. We do not know if the coyotes killed her. It's possible, and it was uh, generally her death was attributed to coyotes, but nobody saw it, and it could never be proven exactly uh, what happened. Uh, if I go in my backyard, and I'm pulling weeds, and I have a heart attack, and I collapse, uh, and I die right there in the backyard, um, my wife probably wouldn't call the hospital. Uh, <laughs> no, she might be here. Uh, she would, I'm sure. Uh, would coyotes come? I have coyotes around my house. Would they come feed on my carcass? Yes, they would do that. Uh, they're opportunistic predators. They take whatever food they can get um, wherever they might find it. Uh, and that's what you have to remember. So if you have small children or grandchildren and they're out in the yard, uh, coyotes, if they sense that they can get an easy meal, they'll take advantage of it. 
It's just what they do. And um, they are opportunistic predators taking meat at any chance whenever they can get it. A lot of people wonder if coyotes carry rabies. Uh, it's possible. But according to the California Department of Public Health, from 2001 to 2013, that's 12 years, just one coyote was found to be rabid in California. The same rate as domestic cats. So uh, you're just as likely to be attacked by a rabid cat as you are a coyote. So we're talking about, statistically speaking, it's such a small likelihood, it's something you shouldn't worry about whatsoever. Being attacked by a coyote, that it might be carrying rabies, just something that we don't need to worry about. Uh, now another question that often comes up is, uh, will coyotes prey on my pets? You betcha. <laughs> Uh, coyotes, again, they're opportunistic predators. So if a cat is out away from the house, out of the yard, wandering around, a coyote will go after it. Of course it would do that. I would be shocked if it didn't. Um, and a lot of times people, their cat disappears. In, in this area, in the entire Coachella Valley, it could very well be coyotes. It probably isn't, but it could certainly be. Uh, I have one person who actually saw a coyote attack and kill a cat. Um, so it can happen. What about, uh, I get a lot of questions, people say, well, I've got a really big dog, and I go hiking, and the coyotes start following us. Do I need to be, uh, do I need to worry? Yes. Uh, I was, uh, we were doing a research project on roadrunners out by Desert Hot Springs. Some of you might have he uh, heard me tell this story. And I heard some barking behind me. We were in a, a photographic blind, uh, so I had to peel back the uh, door to the tent, and I looked across the desert, and I saw a large German shepherd running through the desert, barking. And I looked in front of it, because he seemed to be chasing something, and I looked about 50 yards in front of the German shepherd, and there were two coyotes. And now you know it was a male and a female, a mated pair, in all likelihood. And uh, the German shepherd was chasing the much smaller coyotes. And then um, the German Shepherd got tired, <laughs> you know, not in very good shape. The coyotes came back and started running around it, yipping it, getting it to chase them further out into the desert. They got almost exactly one mile, and then the two coyotes uh, went into a wash. I couldn't see them anymore, and the German Shepherd followed. I went back to work dealing, doing stuff we were doing with roadrunners, but uh, by the afternoon, I never saw any of the animals again. That afternoon when we closed up shop at the roadrunner site, we got in our cars and we drove around to the wash and there was the German Shepherd. And it had been partially eaten. So two 25 pound coyotes attacked and killed a much, much larger German Shepherd. Uh, I, don't, I had another friend who was on a hike with a pit bull and coyotes uh, bit its tail off. Uh, and that was a pit bull. And they're just too fast. They're too smart, too fast. So coyotes will attack your dog no matter how big it is. It doesn't matter. Um, coyotes are very good predators. They're smart, much smarter than your dog. I'm not saying anything bad about your pet. Um, and they will take advantage if they can. So any animal you have uh, it may be fair prey for uh, coyotes and may wind up on the coyotes menu. Um, let's see, okay. Uh, <laughs> the coyotes should know that they're not supposed to eat our pets. Uh, well, uh, that's obviously false. Coyotes are predators. It's the pet owner's responsibility to protect their pet. I have now told everybody in here that coyotes are a threat to your pet. And so if you have a pet, and you lose it to a coyote, you're not doing one of the three things that I recommend. Uh, if you have a dog, oh, it could be a cat, I guess, too. Uh, when outside of your yard, keep your pet on a short leash at all times. Uh, a lady down the street from me has one of these, I don't know, it's a leash that, you know, I don't have a dog, so I'm not sure how the leash works, but it goes out 50 feet. And so the dog went out to the end of the leash, and the coyote attacked the dog. Now, it was on a leash, and she was able to reel in the dog, but the dog had to get 23 stitches. Uh, actually, it was the dog that went after the coyote that started the fight. Uh, the coyote was just kind of following them. Um, but that long leash does not give the owner time to interfere and scare that coyote away, which is what normally would happen. So short leash, not more than 12 feet long. And the shorter, the better, actually. 
Uh, do not allow your pet to be unattended when it is in a fenced yard unless you have a six foot high chain link fence barbed at the top, you know the, when the chain link has those two spikes, okay, and buried 18 inches into the soil. Okay, if you have a six foot high cinder block wall and you keep your dog there unattended, uh, I would predict that over time, you dog may end up prey for coyote. Because uh, coyotes can easily get over a six foot high block wall fence. They can't get over an eight foot high block wall fence, but nobody builds those. So, um, so uh, you have to do something uh, if your fence is only that high because coyotes live everywhere. There's no, doesn't matter if you live in a gated community, they live everywhere. And if your fence is six foot high or lower and your pet is out there unattended, a coyote may someday get in there and kill your pet. It may not be able to carry your pet outside the area, uh, but it will uh, kill it or injure it before you can get out there. Uh, <laughs> for cats, never let your cat outside unless you have it on a leash. Um, I bet most people who have cats let it outside. <laughs> uh, cats have special legal law, uh, rules that allow you to let your cat outside. If you let the cat outside, in our area, no matter where you live, uh, sooner or later it will not come home. It was probably captured or could have been captured by a coyote, I should say. So those are the things to do now. There is a device called a coyote roller that if you have a six foot high block wall fence, you can string a wire or a very taut rope and then put some PCV pipe over it. And then when the coyote jumps on top of the fence, that thing starts rolling around and he falls to the ground. And what coyotes won't do is expend a lot of energy to get your pet. They'll expend some, but they won't keep jumping up over and over and over again and uh, slipping off the top because that roller uh, runs down the top of your fence. Uh, you can buy these commercially and have them installed commercially too by uh, fence companies often put these in. Uh, so if you have a six foot uh, high block wall fence, this might be something you could use. And then you probably can leave your pet unattended in the backyard, assuming the coyote doesn't figure out a way to get around the roller. Uh, I shouldn't laugh. I, pets are, we love our pets, and we hate to see them become prey for a coyote, to be sure. But it's called a coyote roller, and you can have them professionally installed, too. Uh, and of course, never, ever, ever feed coyotes. If you feed coyotes, they'll be your friend for life. Um, and then when you die, they'll really be your friend because they may feed on your carcass if there's nobody around to take you to the hospital. So don't feed coyotes. Uh, it's, I know some people uh, like to do it, and I get people that tell me they feed them all the time. Um, sooner or later, the coyote's probably going to get into a problem with you or your neighbors doing something you didn't want them to do and uh, maybe eating your neighbor's pets, and then your neighbor can sue you if you've been feeding the coyote and they know about it. So if you feed the coyotes, you better make sure it's in secret. Uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Remember, it's your responsibility to keep your pet safe. It's the coyote's role to be a predator. So uh, with that, I'll answer any questions you might have about coyotes, ways you can protect your pets. Thank you. Okay, yes, in the center there. Are there any differences between coyotes in the east, say, in Massachusetts or in California? Yes, the ones in Massachusetts are somewhat bigger. They can weigh anywhere from 25 to about 34 pounds. A little bit bigger because there's more food resources there than we have here. Uh, but still, the difference is not significant. Uh, other questions? Yes, sir, in the blue. Okay, question is, what about water? If there's a lot of water, is that good for coyotes? If there's no water at all, is that a problem? Coyotes do not need access to drinking water so long as they have access to food because coyotes can survive by getting all their moisture from the food they eat because they're predators. 
Uh, now, if they're eating a lot of garbage, that's probably not true, but if they're eating a lot of garbage, they have access to water because they're in a residential area where there's water everywhere every day. Uh, but in the wild, out in the middle of the Mojave Desert, for example, uh, coyotes are feeding uh, a lot on animals, and as long as they find enough food, they get all the water they need. So we found coyotes in areas where we know there are no springs for 50 miles, and coyotes will still be there. Yes, in the baseball cap. The question is, if they'll go after large pets, what's stopping them from going after humans? Um, <laughs> not a lot. No, I <laughs> No, no. That's not true. I was too tempting. Um, first of all, humans are, all of us here are large. We're larger than our pets. Uh, I'd be willing to bet that none of you have a pet that outweighs you. Okay? There might be a couple of exceptions. So we're big. We're bigger than your pet. In addition to that, uh, coyotes uh, are very wary of humans in general because they know we're smart and they know we're social. They know if they see one human, there'll probably be another one around. And most of the time, that's true. We stand tall. Uh, our eyes are at the same height as a quarter horse. And so we look bigger than we are because of that. So that makes us a little more intimidating too. Uh, coyotes, <laughs> most of the coyotes in the Coachella Valley know that humans often have weapons. Uh, and I'm not talking about firearms or something, although that might be true in some cases. But we can throw things at them. We can throw rocks and bottles and God knows whatever we might find around where we're standing. And I, I would be willing to bet there hasn't been a coyote in the Coachella Valley that hasn't, been, uh, hasn't had a human throw stuff at them at least a dozen times in their life, and probably several hundred, if I had to guess. So they're well aware of that, and the danger is that our ability to hurl objects uh, is. That's why we play football and baseball. Yes, back there. Uh, a couple of qu uh, comments there. Uh, you were impressed at how fast coyotes can run. 42 miles an hour is really moving fast. And remember, the coyote knows the terrain, and the dogs don't. You know, this, in most cases, it's the first time the dogs have ever been on an area like that. So the coyotes can easily elude. Uh, oh, they, they know where the fence is, and they know which ones have barbed wire. Uh, so it's their, it's their home territory, and they know it really well, and rarely do the dogs know it that well. And, and then, of course, coyotes are just much smarter than any domestic dog. Um, we haven't given them IQ tests yet. And this, then the second comment you had? The afterbirth. Uh, coyotes are well known to feed on uh, the afterbirth of sheep. Uh, sometimes they may not bother the sheep, sometimes they may, uh, but they're well aware that bighorn sheep and mule deer and domestic sheep and cattle all uh, discharge after birch with a lot of moisture, very rich in protein. It's a great free, easy meal, and uh, they take advantage of it readily. And it's one of the reasons coyotes seem to do so well in an area where there's a lot of livestock, because that's a fairly, they may not be able to bring down a cow, but they uh, can gorge themselves on the afterbirth. Back there. Okay, good. That's a good question. Uh, if coyotes are monogamous, why would they breed with a dog then? <laughs> it's the same reason because my wife has, is a brunette and I was a blonde. Now I'm not so much a blonde anymore. Um, but diversity is appealing uh, during breeding times. So if there's a female dog, we'll use a female first. It, it's an estrus the coyote will detect that and be attracted to it. And if it's an unmated coyote or a coyote in an area that for whatever reasons there aren't any female coyotes around, it's going to take the, the, uh, the female that, uh, canine that is available to it, whether it's a wolf or a dog. Now, these are, I, I do want to point out, these are very rare instances that this happens. It's not typical, so, but it can happen, and there are a few records of it happening. So most of the time, coyotes are going to try to find a female, for sure. Uh, way back there with your sweater on, yes. Uh, coyotes ever domesticated? The answer is... The best answer is no. Can they be tamed? Yes. Um, the pro <laughs> uh, I have some friends who've done research on captive coyotes, and 
you know, they're, when they're little puppies, they bring them home, and the puppies play with the kids, and the coyotes are very tame, but they can never be housebroken. You know, that's one <laughs> pretty basic issue. Um, and uh, they have a, a tendency to wander vast distances across the landscape, and so they don't do well with leashes. They don't like that at all. So they can be tamed. You know, get them so they won't bite you, and they'll come up, and you can pet them if they're raised in captivity. But um, domesticated, um, I'm not aware of any instances where they've been able to domesticate them such that they're like a pet. Okay. Uh, yes, right here in front. Do coyotes have any predators? Oh, yes. Coyotes have lots of... Wolves will uh, kill coyotes, and there have been many records of wolves killing coyotes, uh, to be sure. Um, and, of course, humans, the greatest predator of all time, Homo sapiens, uh, regularly preys on coyotes, and sometimes purposely, sometimes by accident. Uh, so we're by far the, the most important predator of coyotes. Uh, Coyote pups have been known to be taken by eagles. Mom and dad are away. That little tiny cute pup comes out and playing around the burrow entrance, and it's grabbed by an eagle. Um, coyotes have been known to kill, uh, be killed and preyed on by mountain lions occasionally. Um, it doesn't happen a lot, but it, it has been recorded. So they do have their own predators, uh, to be sure. But humans are by far the worst predator. Yes. Okay, let me... Uh, the, the, I'll answer the second question first, uh, and that is uh, there are some dogs uh, that seem to have traits of both coyotes and domestic dogs. 99.99 um, .99 times out of 100, those are probably, uh, the resemblance is probably by chance. It's not because they're hybrids between a coyote and dog. I mean, it can happen, but it's really, really rare in the wild for that to happen. Most of the time, the coyote eats the dog, you know, whether it's in heat or not. And then your first question? Uh, question is, why are coyotes a protected species? They're not. Uh, yeah, uh, they're not protected. Now, um, if you, uh, let's say, not in a residential area, but let's say that you're out in off uh, Dillon Road someplace in Sky Valley. Uh, you can kill a coyote whenever you want uh, as long as you can convince the game warden that you did it to protect your pets or your children or something like that. So they're not an endangered species. They're not protected in any way. They're considered a varmint in California, which means open hunting season. So, uh, But you can't discharge firearms around residential units unless... There are special circumstances. So you'd have to explain to the game warden why you were shooting so close to a home, even though it was your own, um, if that helps. Yes, back there. Can coyotes swim? Yes, uh, they're good swimmers, just like your domestic dog would be in most instances, although some of the dogs that have uh, on my block I know can't swim. But uh, <laughs> most of the time, um, canines are pretty good swimmers, and coyotes would be too. Um, they will swim to escape. Uh, they have been known to swim to get prey in some instances, so they don't just do it when they have to. Sometimes they voluntarily do it as well. So, yes, right in the blue, yes. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, what can, if you have your pet on a, a short lease, uh, leash, like I suggested, what can you do to protect your pet? Um, about three years ago, my wife and I, we, we, it was early in the morning, uh, we were driving down a road in Palm Springs, uh, a residential road, and a lady runs out in front of my car and waving her arms and and I said, what's wrong? What's wrong? She says, there's a coyote following us. And she had a little uh, foo-foo, I'm sorry, that's, that's disrespectful. She had a little dog that she was holding, and she was really worried uh, about it. And, the, and I turned around, and there was the coyote on the other side of the street. And I knew that he could sense that she was frightened. They're smart. They can, they can figure it out. And it wanted her dog. Um, and uh, so she was holding it, which is good for the dog, but not good for her. Uh, would the coyote have eventually gone up to her and tried to jump up and snap that dog out of her arms? I don't know, probably not. Uh, uh, but if you're in a situation like that, you have to become bold. Uh, and so I 
pulled the car over, I got out of the car, and I walked right over to the coyote, and he hightailed it as fast as he could because I was behaving as do most humans when they don't like coyotes around. They throw rocks at them, they chase them, they become aggressive themselves. Coyote's only 25 pounds, it took off. So had she um, stood her ground, maybe even boldly moved towards the coyote, I can guarantee you it would have run off. But my wife says, what, what if she's afraid? How can she do that? Well, that's a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the offspring leave in the fall. Yeah, they, they split it, uh, from their parents in the fall. Sometimes they hang on longer than they're supposed to, just like humans do. Okay. One more question in front. Yes. Okay, uh, qu question was, um, is it a good idea to, let's say, live trap a coyote and then move it away from the residential area where it won't bother anybody anymore? And the answer is absolutely not, okay? You have two choices. You can either leave the coyote around the neighborhood and just deal with the droppings in your driveway and whatever else <laughs> might be a problem and maybe enjoy that it's around. They're, they're, in the winter, they're quite attractive animals. Uh, or you can kill it because you cannot move it someplace else. You cannot, you should never do that with any wild animal unless it's been raised in captivity and even those usually don't survive anyway. And the reason is that if you take a coyote alive and you move it someplace else, if the habitat is suitable, it will already be occupied by coyotes. And then you've initiated a huge battle. They're going to fight to the death. Uh, and uh, that's even worse than had you just dispensed with the coyote right there. I'm not advocating that you kill coyotes that are in the neighborhood, but I'm saying that those are your two choices. You cannot take the coyote and release it somewhere else. If there are no coyotes in the habitat, it's because the habitat isn't suitable. So you let the coyote uh, go someplace where it's really barren maybe, there's no food, and that's why it's not occupied by coyotes, so the coyote starves to death. And that is what will happen. There is no other alternative. Um, so I, I suggest to people figure out a way to live at peace with the coyote. It'll, the coyote that's in your yard tonight will be the same coyote that's there five years from now. So if it learns that you're going to hold your ground and that you protect your pets and that you don't give it food, you'll live in harmony with the coyote and there will never be an incident. Uh, and so that would be my recommendation. Um, and you can harass coyotes and they, that'll keep them a little bit further away from you. Squirt them with the hose or something. They don't like that. Uh, throw a rock at them if you insist on doing that, and they'll stay at a greater distance from you so they won't get hit by a rock. But that's your choices, and you have no other choices. Thank you very much.